All right, it looks like things are... Uh, Fingers crossed, fully fixed now, but welcome everyone to the Sea Dragon Battle. This is game one, I believe, of a best of three between Team Titan, a Malaysian team, and Myth Trust. Thank you, of course, to MSI for sponsoring this tournament, as well as Adata. And uh, don't talk very kindly allowed me to cast this, but we are going to be seeing a pretty exciting game, I would say. Um, Titan look like they've got their full lineup. I think Yoko Yoko is, in fact, KYXY. He's just got a really dumb name. Yeah, that's KYXY. Uh, and NWT, of course, is Yamase. On the side of Myth Trust, I believe they've also got their full lineup. Uh, Noki has decided not to, you know, tag himself up just to, just to make it harder for me because that does seem to be the sort of stuff that these players love to do. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, so Myth Trust recently, how have they been playing? All in all, sort of up and down and all around. Uh, I think the most recent game we've seen from Myth Trust, they did... Yeah, they've been losing a lot. Um, <laughs> they actually went up against Titan in about a week ago and lost 0-2. to two. Titan, on the other hand, they've also been dropping some games, though. They've been on a bit of a throw streak. So we just saw them lose to Execration just tonight. So, what, maybe an hour ago or so. And they also lost to MVP Hot 6, which is also a little bit surprising, given that, I suppose, typically you sort of uh, think of MVP Hot 6 as... I would say a tier 2 team, whereas Titan is a tier 1, so not too sure what's going on there, but we'll have to see. This game's going to be rather telling, depending on how these two teams perform tonight. In terms of playstyle, though, Titan normally prefer a more teamfight push style lineup. They like to rat as well. If they can get the Lycan, which obviously they can't this game as it's been banned out, um, then they will sort of grab that Lycan and use it to push down towers quite aggressively. Otherwise, uh, Myth Trust, on the other hand, they're more team... I guess, I don't want to say team pushy oriented it's not really a word but Lakels does quite like those hard farming heroes he likes to split push quite a lot so you'll see a lot of morphling spectre um clinks as well occasionally weaver as well occasionally but usually Lakels takes a hero that he can farm with and split push with whereas titan are more split push very aggressively from the get-go usually around once the 20 minute mark comes they're usually death balling if they can so we'll have to see they do pick the void first which could be a high play in the offlane i'm not a Big fan of Void in the offlane for a team like Titan, since normally Ohio takes a very tanky initiation hero like the Centaur, um, the Brewmaster, the Tidehunter. He seems to excel, Darkseer especially, he's really good at the Darkseer, but Ohio seems to excel at heroes that could really just have oomph. Whereas Void, he's very team based, so if you get a good Chromosphere, then your you team has to sort of do the damage. Whereas normally Ohio plays heroes that he can blink in and he can do a lot of damage by himself. Um, whereas Void in the offlane, he's normally based around the chronosphere. Though, of course, if he gets kills, he can, you know, get up a mask and just get the maelstrom, do some damage himself. Don't get me wrong. But as an offlane Void, normally you're pretty underleveled, underfarmed, blah blah blah. You're basically just there for your team to sort of combo around you. So, I'm hoping it's going to be one position Void being played by probably K by X Y, or it could be Yamate. Myth Trust, on the other hand, Bristleback already been picked up. That's not the sort of hero you normally see, but I guess they're thinking they want to get tanky core heroes that can deal with this faceless Void, since Void is pretty squishy, especially if he goes to the Mask of Madness build. Plus, what, 33% damage? It does have a big impact on heroes that have only got about 1,000 HP. It means they've got around about 600 HP um, at around about the 10-minute mark to 15-minute mark to 20-minute mark even, depending on how many strength items they buy. But it looks like Titan are just going to be comboing around this Chronosphere with the Ancient Apparition pickup. I'm surprised they didn't take the Skyrath Mage. The Skyrath Mage is actually pretty good against the Bristleback. So back damage reduction is 40%. But then if you've got the Skyrath Mage, it's I think plus 30% bonus damage, if I'm not incorrect, um, at level 4. So you pretty much negate that completely for magical damage. But I guess Ancient Apparition does have some other valuable inputs, such as being able to do things from afar. His Eyes Blast, once you get the Argonim Scepter up, and normally when, I think it's Ned who normally plays the AA, he does get a pretty fast Argonim Scepter. So every time I've seen it, it's been usually around about the 15 to 20 minute mark, unless Titan are getting absolutely stomped. So that fast uh, Argonim Scepter is quite nice against series like Bristleback as well, because, or even just the, the Ice Blast itself, because they normally go for regeneration items, and when they don't have that, you know, massive HP, um, pull just from being healed up, they are a little bit uh, susceptible to getting killed, which is what you want against a Bristleback. You don't want him running around getting cool spray stacks up. But Titan now actually banning off the offlaners, so they think that this is possibly going to be like Hell's on a one position Bristleback. Uh, 
I Hopefully stream shouldn't be lagging, but either way, um, so they suspect maybe one position of bristle back. Mistrust on the other hand, getting rid of the Sand King, which Extinct is quite good at, and the Viper, which generally just a very strong mid-hero. They might also be looking to take a mid-hero that is quite susceptible to getting shut down, such as, I wouldn't say OD, but maybe Ember Spirit, possibly. I mean, Viper pretty much destroys anyone in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. There's only very few heroes who can actually uh, go against him, so... Maybe Mythtrust just want to have a little bit more security in that mid lane, so getting rid of the Viper makes sense in that regard. But we'll have to see what the next pickup are. They could go for very hardcore pushing lineup if they wanted to. Um, maybe they want to grab... Huh, Shadow Demon, alright. That's... It also doesn't reveal much. An offensive or de defensive hero against a Void, it can be really nice since provided you position yourself well, you can stay outside of the Chronosphere and just uh, disrupt whoever gets hit in the Chronosphere. Uh, similar to a VS swap, but you don't have to actually sacrifice yourself. You can just swap your ally. Uh, sorry, just disrupt your ally or disrupt the void, and everyone's going to be all right. He's also quite good against the AA, since you have 2.5 seconds out of the uh, ultimate duration taken off. So if it's only a you know eight second ultimate, that's a quarter of the duration of the ultimate completely negated by the disruption. So Shadow Demon, all in all, a nice hero against these two pickups thus far. But we'll have to see how the rest of the lineup goes for Titan, since Shadow Demon also can be, I guess easily killed in a way and ooh, the juggernaut pickup now coming out could be a support pickup juggernaut we have seen a lot of support juggernaut uh shadow demon is quite good to get jug actually since the illusions are going to be extra targets for the omni slash but also the uh, disruption can be used just to sort of stop the jug from from targeting someone plus he's also got that dis uh, dis sorry, Demonic Purge, which goes through the Blade Fury, meaning that even if he's trying to sort of spin and run away, the uh, Demonic Purge is going to be able to stop him from running. So, Juggernaut into a Shadow Demon is a little bit interesting, but they must have something in mind. Support Juggernaut is really nice when you combine it with a Skyrath Mage, since they've got the, you know, the sort of slow, so then Juggernaut can just chase after people in Blade Fury, then you've also got the Silence, which does increase damage. But with an AA, I'm starting to feel like this must be an offlane void, Juggernaut taking the one position. Unless they're going to be grabbing something else. I mean, AA does have nice magic damage increased with the Ice Vortex. That is 30% bonus magical damage, of course, as well. But it's... I guess it's harder to cast in a way because the radius is so small, whereas the concussive shot just hits someone in the face. Um, the uh, Ice Vortex is a bit harder. And, man, to me, this, this lineup from Mythtrust just screams they're picking up a hard carry. But we'll have to see. Batrider, though, as a pickup, is quite interesting. He's not really in, sort of, quote-unquote, in the meta game. It's a terrible way to put it, but he hasn't been picked up as much recently. He is still a strong hero for various reasons, but Disruptor is a really nice pickup against him since that glimpse will immediately cancel, well, not immediately, but it will cancel his flaming lasso if he does catch it after a blink. So that is going to be quite frustrating for the Batrider. Uh, plus, I mean, they've got sort of... The spin, meaning the magical damage of the Firefly won't do much. They're going to have the Healing Ward, so even if someone does grab Song as they sort of escape, they can just run to the Healing Ward and heal back up. The Chronosphere 2 is quite nice to shut the Batrider down, so I'm not really too sure about this Batrider pickup. Unless it's going to the mid lane. Well, that's the other thing. I guess if they are not taking a hard carry, they've got two offlaners, but Bristleback is a one position against this lineup when they've got the only push they've got is a Shadow Shaman. And other than that, they've got nowhere to take down towers. It feels like they're going to have to take maybe a death proper for the mid lane if they want to go hard push. But even then, they don't have great carry potential against the Juggernaut and a Void. And even the team fight from Titan is quite scary too. Titan's big weakness, though, is they don't have any ability to push towers. So Mistrust has sort of got that going for them. But if they're going to be having a one position Bristleback, they definitely do not want to be turtling. But if they're not having one position Bristleback, what are they taking for a carry? Is Batrider going mid? Is Bristleback going off lane? How are they laning this? Well, it's going to be revealed by this next pick anyway. So, what... What are they going to be taking? They don't have any... They don't have a lot of damage. This is a really damage over time based lineup, if you actually look at their picks. So Aether Shock is a bit of a new, don't get me wrong, but then you've got the Quill Spray, which is damage over time, the Firefly, which is damage over time, and the Shadow Poison, which is damage over time. So whatever they take last, it's probably going to be something that will capitalize on, wow, Wisp. Wow, is this a mid Shadow Shaman?
Um... All right, Wisp. Wisp. Maybe if I just say the hero name over and over again, I'll suddenly understand. I don't really understand at the moment. The Wisp pickup. I'll have to see the lanes. My pro, though, normally plays very snowball heroes in the mid lane, so he'll take things like the TA, the Queen of Pain, um, you know, the Viper itself, the Invoker. He likes heroes that can really just get the game pushed into his, uh, his own favor, so... I don't really see any of these heroes as his sort of playstyle, other than maybe the Shadow Shaman. But Shadow Shaman as a mid is... I've only seen it done a couple of times recently, and every time it's failed, I've not seen a mid Shadow Shaman go well of late. So, that's a little bit scary, and... Net on the Void? Net... just took the Void. What is going on here? Literally, what is going on here? Oh, everyone DC'd. Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to the MSI Sea Dragon Battle. Thank you, of course, to MSI for sponsoring this tournament as well as Adata. And welcome. Should be pretty interesting best of three. We did already see the draft occurring. And that last pick, which looked like a wisp, and I was just going, what? Normally he plays things like Dragon Knight, TA, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it was not, in fact, a wisp, it was Dragon Knight. So, it looks like Mikkels is going to be grabbing the Bristleback. Um, well, it looks like I can't actually see until we get into the game. But it looks like it's going to be one position Bristleback coming up from Mythtrust, which I am really unsure of. I think the Dragonite pickup is a little bit better since it does give them a bit more carry potential, but still, it feels like, I guess, the lineup is kind of severely lacking from Mythtrust, but I, I suppose the Dragonite rounds it out a little bit more. It gives them more carry, gives them more push. Um, all in all, it's, it's, it'll do, you know? It'll do. But going through the players quickly, I'm especially interested with uh, Titan, since the lineup coming up from Mythtrust is a bit weird, given their players, but it's also quite strong. Um, but we're going to be seeing Noki playing the Shadow Shum. His name is a kind of weird, sad face. Uh, Dragonite, of course, can be played by MyPro in the mid lane. Momo, who I believe is SD, is going to be grabbing that Shadow Demon support. Batrider, very funky looking Batrider in fact, is going to be played there by KYT. Look at that. Flame Stitch Suiting's Bandana. How exciting. And of course Lakel's on the Bristleback carry. On the side of Titan, we're going to be having a Timbersaw pickup coming out from Yamate. Extinct, going to be on the uh, Ancient Apparition. KYXY or Yoko Yoko playing the Faceless Void. Disruptor being played by Net and Juggernaut. Offlane Juggernaut by Ohio. And they will be running down to the bot lane. Five man, could be a five man engagement uh, on the bot lane. Looks like Yamato is going to be the one running forward. My pro is coming forward as well. He wants to try and find a kill if he can, but nope, Titan having none of it. They're just going to back out. They did block a camp in the jungle here. This camp was blocked, I'm assuming, because they've got a, the uh, Batrider. It is quite nice to get a, just a ward around here to block these two camps, but it is very obviously and easily dewatered. Of course, blocking this camp out does mean Batrider cannot stack this. If he has a hard time in the lane, he's going to be forced to come over here and steal these two camps from the supports, which additionally is a little bit unsafe to stack, as it's quite easy for the offlane hero to sort of just take a wander over here if he wishes to. Whereas this camp here and this camp here are very, very safe to farm, since if you're in trouble, you know, you can run to a tier 2 tower very easily. Whereas with this one, it's a bit of a further run to get to the tier 2 tower. But he will, of course, have two allies sort of back him up. But either way, uh, so we are going to be seeing Yamato going the mid lane on this Timbersaur, and I think this is a very smart laning choice coming out from Titan. My pro strength hero against uh, the Timbersaur, who's got that Welling Death, is going to be giving him so much grief. Every time he try and goes in for a last hit, he's going to be having that Welling Death hit him in the face. And in fact, I'm actually on the top lane. Uh, looks like KYT is going to be right. He's just taking a bit of harassment there. But yeah, Timbersaur is sort of the ultimate pain to any sort of strength melee hero since he doesn't really give them any opportunity. Plus a lot of his damage will be pure. Um, not right now but sort of in the mid to late game phases or I suppose even in the early game team fights if they're near trees. On the easy lane or the off lane it's a bit easier since you do have sort of trees lining everywhere. But for the mid lane the only trees are really these ones and normally you don't sort of level up. Something just happened. Um, normally you don't sort of level up the timber chain in the mid lane timber saw. So I'll have to see. But either way, the uh, the damage coming out from the Whirling Death will be quite painful there once he gets up a couple more levels. And you can just see there, wow, already at half HP. Of course, he will be bottle crying and the bottle should be coming out right now. In fact, it is on the courier. He went for a straight bottle rush. So he got pulled two tangos, but as expected with the Dragonite, 
two GG branches, and then you just spam out the Breath Fighter farm. And of course, he will just be bottle crying. That's, that's pretty much a mid lane Dragon Knight. So the pressure is really on Yamate to destroy this lane if he can. Uh, he's going to have a bit of a harder time. Just, you know, given that uh, he is versing this, this Dragon Knight who's got that really nice nuke. I can see it's watered. Um, but he should still be able to just sort of dominate the lane if he wants to. Micro will get his farm though, since even if Yamate does force him out of the lane, he can just back off and breathe fire to get his farm up. On the other lane, so we're going to be seeing KOXY with... Ooh, a Void Hammer. What item is that? Is that a new one? I have never heard of that item before. Well, either way, uh, Void Hammer, owned by Yoko Yoko there, <laughs> can be farmed in the top lane. Two supports pretty much just sitting there pulling. There's nobody there to contest. Um... But literally nobody, because Batrider's head to the jungle. Though, like I said, this hard camp is watered out, and he got super unlucky here with the Mud Golem. So, he's got no way to hit that level 2, which is what he really wants. I'm surprised he didn't actually start stacking this camp here, but like I said, this camp is a little bit more risky to farm. Anyway, Ohio's going to be coming. He's got the Invisibility Rune. Kuria, like I said, is going to be Bottle Crone, so Ohio's probably just going to camp here and wait for that Kuria to come. Still got half the duration on the Invisibility, so by the time the Kuria gets back to base and heads back out, he should be able to, in fact, snipe it. It might be cutting it a little bit close, but three minute mark is coming up. Mm. He could even just go stand on the high ground here and wait. Looks like he's going to run to the trees here. So he's not going to he's not gonna camp it. Oh, if he just waited. If he'd actually waited, he would have got that. The invisibility rune wore out just at the right time. But they're sending the courier back. They're a little bit worried. They're saying Juggernaut's missing. Play it safe with the courier. And yeah, they waited until they flew it. So... That's really nice map awareness from the supports. And good timing as well. Um, you know, you could see there they camped at the tier 2 tower. So if he wanted to steal, you know, a kill on the uh, courier, he would have had to take a lot of damage there to get it. And those supports were well aware of that. They knew the timing, they knew that Omni had picked up invisibility rune and it disappeared. So really, really well done there. But now they know he's back, they can see him there just, just doing a little bit of experience. He's sort of just hanging out, as you do. Um, on the other lane, so KYT is coming to the top lane now. He has hit level 2. Getting a little bit of farm up now the tower has started tanking the creeps there. Lakel's on the other side, 22 CS versus 21. Of course, you're going to be expecting near perfect CS from both of these two carry players. They are both very good at farming. But in terms of item choices, that's where the real difference is going to come out. So one position at Bristleback normally goes for items like the mech and the pipe, so it gets really, really tanky. Vanguard is also an option, given that he's versing a melee, well, sort of two melee carries. The Vanguard could be really, really good this game. Uh, so getting those sort of tanky items up and then after that you might go for an intelligence item like a Shiva Scout or I've seen Hex as well but the general the general gist of it is be able to output every single quill spray in the world the one interaction I'm on to actually mid lane we're going to be seeing an initiation coming up into the timber saw he has got one level of timber chain so the stun's already come out but of course there is the opportunity for the shackle will they have enough damage no he's going to be able to timber chain himself away no 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 shadow poison, so he's going to be okay. He can just bottle himself up using that DD rune as well. My pro is going to be uh, healed up there by his friend. I think it was a shadow shaman. But still, they missed that first part, and that was a, a pretty big input. That was a lot of mana by everyone. All the supports are out of mana at this point. Well, by all the supports, I mean shadow shaman. <laughs> uh, the shadow demon is okay. But still, big input for no reward. It was very, very close there. This is what I mean about getting the timber chain in the mid lane, though. Normally, you don't see it picked up. So I think it was a really good decision um, from him there to go for it. And we can see now the harassment coming out. Just using that pure damage. Uh, nice little combo there. Net is coming in. He has got the glimpse of a one. But will he catch sight of him? He will indeed. He has got... Oh, KYT backing him up, though. My pro now should be good to get away. Yamata is going to get disrupted there. Shadow Demon's helping out. No, they will be able to get the first blood there. The damage over time coming out from Extinct. With the uh, level 1 of the cold feed, it's going to be enough. KYT now taking huge amounts of damage to that uh, cold, sorry, chilling touch. Really boosting the damage there. But they will be able to hit the first blood, and that's all they really came for. And rotation from a lot of people there, but still no return kill coming out. However, the Kells is still doing quite well on the farm. Ohio's finding pretty much nothing. He's got 6 CS. He's at level 3, so it's not the end of the world, but uh, Batrider, I think, is going to have an easier time catching up. Purely because Barrett can go to the jungle, whereas Ohio, it's really hard for him to go to the jungle. Even with the spin and the healing ward, he's going to be taking a lot of damage. Though it looks like he might be trying to just sort of ninja the stack here. Oh, he is going to be stealing the stack. Oh, but he has to watch out because Shadow Shaman's coming in. There is a generation room, but Mormor should be taking it. Dragon Knight's running down as well, and which way does he go? I think he sees 
the Dragonite there. He's going to get shackled up. He needs to get out now. He's going to get hit there with the uh, Soul Catcher. Trying to juke his way around. He's, uh, is he going to be able to do it? He is indeed. Will they catch sight of him? He's trying to attract the aggro of the creeps. No, Dragonite going to come from the side. Breathe fire and take him down. Two supports getting really, really low though. Oh, 13 HP. Yes, he's going to get killed by a neutral. So, even though nobody got the kill from the side of the Titan for that, it's still possibly worth it just to sort of slow the supports farm down. And now they will be coming in to steal that stack. Having a Timbersaw means stealing stacks is actually pretty easy. The Whirling Death, the Chakram, though, they did use up pretty much all of his mana. He's got a regeneration rune, so I guess he doesn't really care, hey? And as addition to that, they're getting to support some farm too, since they were the ones who sort of stole that. And they're even going to get the Courier. Are they one more hit? Yes. The Vision coming out from Extinct there using the Ice Vortex. That is going to be a Courier going down. Okay, definitely worth it there for Titan. They got the stack from the Batrider. They got a kill on one of the supports. And they got... This is a bit of a wasted regenerate. Um, and they got the Courier. So, looking at the net worth now. Timbersaw leading the charge. But Lakels is quite close behind. And Yoko Yoko yeah, lagging behind a little bit. But he's still doing pretty well. In terms of the last hits, he's actually doing even. So, where is the money for Lakels coming from? Why is he 1k ahead? Well, not 1k, but 800 ahead. 800, 400 ahead. Oh, can't even math. Either way, it doesn't matter. Lakels now could be dying. He is trying to go in onto Ned. Ned has to get out right now. One more hit. He will be going down the healing wall, trying to keep him up. He pops the magic secret. No, the damage is just way too much. Yamato now doing what he can. He's going to be throwing out the pure damage. Will be enough. It will. One more hit. Yes, he does go down. Yoko, Yoko now coming in. Chronosphere just for Shadow Shaman. You know, why not? He's only got level 2 though on the time lock. That was weird by Yamato. Um, level 2 on the time lock, but... It does do enough damage there to get a kill, so two kills going the way of Titan, two to four on the board at the moment. Looks like a Mask of Madness should be coming out fairly soon there for uh, KYXY. Yamato, meanwhile, he's going either for the mech or for a blade mail. Or a Soul Curse, no, I think it's probably Ned actually on top lane. Gonna get, ooh, a lot of damage, that's a TD rune. He will try and send back my pro, but all he's going to be doing is just saving him there from Yamato. Yamato pretty low mana. Nobody else rotating in. He will slow him down there with a the chakra, but he's got nothing left. He does have one willing death. Now he's bottling himself up. My pro actually not cancelling it. My pro trying to bottle himself up as well. My pro going to get the stun out. Can Yamato keep up? No arcane boot. No, nope, the A ultimate coming through. Just blasting onto my pro's face, and there you go. They get a kill. So a one for one exchange. A pretty deep dive coming out there from Mithras, and it did not pay off. They got a kill, of course, but... I would say a support in exchange for a uh, carry is not really worth it. And Shadow Shaman DC. Alright, so what are we seeing then in terms of items at this point? So disconnected, aka okay, Noki. He has got up just praying brown boots. He's trying to get some levels in the mid lane since we did see Dragonite rotate away. Like I said, getting level 6 is always really important on the Shadow Shaman. You uh, want to try and get that level 6 as fast as possible, just so you can start pushing down towers and getting a gold advantage. So I think if he did decide to spend some time in the mid lane, that would be a pretty good investment. Dragon Knight, he is not having a good time. I think he should finish off the treads as well as the magic wand, quite honestly, just due to the amount of magical output coming out from Titan. But if he didn't want to, he's probably definitely going to need a straight BKB. One, oh, actually, once he gets a BKB, he should be pretty safe, since, of course, the magical damage from the time lock is magical, cancelled by BKB. The only physical damage they're going to have is just the basic void hits, as well as the Omni Slash. But, of course, he's got high base armor, so he doesn't really care about the Omni Slash, um, since... I mean, he cares about it, but it's not going to be as impactful for him as it is going to be for, uh, for other heroes. So, I think straight BKB is going to be quite necessary in the Dragon Knight. In terms of other heroes, Shadow Demon has got literally nothing. He's got nothing at all. No items. He needs to get boots up ASAP. Uh, Batrider, on the other hand, has got Tranquil Boots and building towards that Blink Dagger. Comparatively, Ohio has got Face Boots and 400 Gold in the Bank. So in terms of net worth, how are they standing? Looks like Batrider is a little bit ahead, but it's pretty even between those two. And they are both offlaners. Uh, and Lakels, he's finished with the Vanguard, going for his treads now. So like I said, Vanguard, Pipe, Mech, they're all pretty standard Bristleback items. After that, some sort of... You know, you can go for either something like Heaven's Howl. The problem with Heaven's Howl this game 
is that evasion is negated inside of the chronosphere. So that's a big problem I would have with going for Heaven's Halberd. If you're going to be getting it, uh, you know, as a bristleback, you normally should be in the front lane, so you're probably going to be the one who gets chronosphere to start with. So the evasion is going to be negated, and you won't be able to use the the uh, active onto the void if you're chronosphered. It, the uh, Heaven's Heart could be good on one of the support heroes if they'd ever be able to find it up. Um, or the Dragon Knight, since he is a ranged hero in the Elder Dragon form, so he could sort of not be stuck in the chronosphere and then Heaven's Hell onto the void. But Lakel's, I feel, should be standing right at the front, just taking all the damage. So I, I wouldn't say that Heaven's Hell is going to be terrible on him. I wouldn't say it's a bad item. But I think there are better items to go for. Like I said, the Shiva's Guard could be really good for the minus attack speed. Uh, even a BKB wouldn't be bad this game. Just like I said, there's a lot of magical damage coming out from Titan. Titan, on the other hand, like I said, Yamate building towards possibly a mech with the chainmail. It could also be a blade mail. I don't know if blade mail is going to be necessarily a good item this game. There's not really sort of any heroes that really care about it other than the two supports. And even them, I mean, Shadow Demon doesn't hit hard. Shadow Demon is basically just to buff his allies up. And Shadow Shaman... I think if the wards do the damage, you don't get the blade mail return damage. So I don't think blade mail is a good item choice this game, so I think it's going to be a mech. And yeah, he picks up a buckler, so it's a mech. Uh, Ancient Apparition. Like I said, Extinct always somehow has managed to find farm. So he's got 1.5k gold in the bank. He could start building towards his Arganum Scepter right now if he wanted to. Probably wouldn't have it up until around about the 17, 20 minute mark, but he definitely could start getting that uh, point boost drop now. Yeah, sorry, KYXY has got up the Mask of Madness. I would say... Maelstrom into BKB is probably going to be the standard item choice for him. But given that they're versing a physical DPS carry with the Bristleback having the um the Quill Spray, his options are a little bit open. He could go for the Argonim Scepter to tank himself up a little bit. He could go for um, even something like the Assault Cuirass, which is going to give extra uh, attack speed as well as armor for himself and negative armor for the enemy team. Though usually when people have plus 10 armor, you don't go for negative armor items. It is a possibility that he could decide to go for that. Either way, Yamato now at the top lane getting chased down there. But KYT is going to be able to get off the uh, flaming lasso. Yoko Yoko is coming in. He drops his gloves of haste on the ground. That's weird. Uh, Omni Slash going off into my pro. There is a Chronosphere up. Can he catch two with it? Looks like if he uses it right now, he could catch two. Is he going to do it? He's kind of thinking about it. Yeah, he's going to actually catch three there. Perfect Chronosphere. His team's ready to back him up. They're going to be able to get down one. The A ultimate flies through. KYT may be able to make it away, but Extinct is in trouble. The bash on the Kells. Keep him alive, but of course, no, the creep wave is going to be coming in. Yoko, Yoko, KYT, KYXY, sorry, now needs to back out. The Kells is ready to rip and roar and roll. So it's going to be one for one, but a mid for a support is a pretty good trade overall. And of course, this poor Dragonite does not have any good time. Sitting on two to three, so he's three out of four deaths for the team at the moment. He's really trying to have an impact in the game, but it's very, very hard when he's getting focus fired so hard. Either way, uh, Noki almost hit level 6, so this is when the pushing can begin. He is sort of farming against Net, the support disruptor at the moment in the mid lane. Net is actually level 6 now, though, so he's been one-upped by Titan supports. It's so sad. Level-wise, the two supports from Myth are actually in a lot of trouble, and now Net is going to initiate onto him. Oh, even using the Static Storm, they do not like him, and he is just going to go down there. Last year, going the way of Net, the A ultimate flying through as well was really nice, and he still just, just hit level 6. So he just barely grazed level 6 before he was taken down. But that is all he really needed. He can rotate to whatever lane they want now and start pushing the tower. I would say mid lane, not the best decision, given that there are three heroes lurking there. But going down to maybe the bot lane or the top lane, and just sort of ratting alone. That's one thing Shadow Shaman does really well. If your team isn't feeling confident to fight, and at the moment I say mid trust are not confident to fight. They don't have a mech up. They don't have... Any real items on the Dragonite, Batrider, no blinks. So I would say Ratty is going to be the ideal choice. And actually Extinct. Kind of baiting out with the Illusion there. They see two of them running around in the jungle. And they just assume they're both Illusions. But the real one is in fact there. He, uh... He'd better watch out. Disruptor taking a haste rune. And like I said, the wards were dropped on the top lane now. But no, it looks like KYXY just wants to clear them. With the Mask of Madness, he takes a lot of damage, but he will be able to get them down. Though they're pinging him out, they want to go in on him. He's really, really low. Healing Ward going to be coming out, though, getting his health back up. If he goes forward, though, well, they're going to back out. So Mithras aren't going to initiate onto that. And Mech is now done onto Yamato. So, smoke from Mythrust on the top lane. They're sort of backing up 
Lakel. So if anyone has any chance onto him, they're going to take him down. But it looks like Titan not going to do this without a huge advantage in terms of hero numbers. Barrett are going to blink in. Going onto Net. Ohio, they're going to on with Slash immediately. But the creep waves there. Chronosphere going to be landing onto two. But Net's standing in the middle of that Firefly. They need the mech, but the mech's already been used. Net now going to be taking four, but he does manage to get his ult before he goes A, throwing the ultimate out, landing on Shadow Shams. It's a one for one trade, a support for a support. Make that maybe a two for one because they will be able to get down the Kells as well. Batrider just going to fire his way back. He did manage to get a fast blink taker despite having a pretty hard lane, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. They even used the ultimate from the Dragon Knight, but he might be better going mid lane and just trying to get a tower trade if he can. It looks like it's very, very hard to take down anyone at the moment on the side of Titan. They're all quite durable. So it looks like Extinct is going to be rushing that Argonim Scepter. He's picked up the point booster, and this is what I mean. I don't know how he does it, but he always manages to find a lot of farm while still being active in team fights. Of course, with a hero like Ancient Apparition, that is a little bit easier since you can sort of have that global presence while still farming up, but uh, a pretty decent farm for a support AA. I mean, he's just below Ohio by about 1,000 net worth, even less than that, 800 net worth, so he's having a good old time. Everyone's DC. So, golden experience now. Looking at about a 4,000 gold lead for Titan now. Doing pretty well for themselves. Experience sitting around about 5,000 too. So, they are in a good position now. Juggernaut has got his drums completed. I'm assuming Arganim Scepter would be coming out next. Yamate. So, Mech is done. Arcane done. I would say Bloodstone is going to be his next item. It'll give him pretty much limitless mana. Especially because I think he can instantly kill any of these supports. Shadow Shaman, the Shadow Demon, both of them are really, really squishy and susceptible to this game picked off. And wow, what's up with his eyes? <laughs> that was like pointing down here. That's a bit weird. His eyes blinking like, help me, help me. Ping is coming out. Alright, they're reconnecting now. It's alright. I have to wait too much longer for the plays to begin. And no, we're going to have to keep waiting. Well, anyway, what else can I talk about? So I've already talked about their item choices. I've talked about, well, general game plan, I suppose, as well. Titan, they can really just continue on their, their current path. Meow, meow. They've got... <laughs> they've got this really nice initiation coming out from the Void with that Chronosphere. And then they've got so many follow-up spells. They've got the A Ice Blast. They've got the uh, Chakram. They've got the... Uh, Static Storm, the Kinetic Field. I mean, their options are really, really open. Mythrust, I think they're going to be better maybe just focus firing, pushing towers down. So getting a, a bit more of a gold lead in their way. Because at the moment, they're lacking a bit on gold. You can see the supports especially. I mean, more, more. He is just... Like, I'm glad he's got some shoes, but it'd be really nice if he could buy some clothes as well. Or uh, pretty much anything other than what he's got. Because he's got a GPM. 103... Sorry, 131... Anyway, on bot lane, we're going to be seeing Yamate going full YOLO onto the Kells. I don't know if that's a great idea. No, it is going to be a good idea because they're going to send it back. Ice Blast coming onto his head. He's doing whatever they can to take him down. He's so tanky, but when you've got that Whirling Death, when you've got that Ice Blast, it doesn't matter how tanky you are, you're probably going to go down eventually, especially when there's what, four heroes surrounding you. The only one who wasn't there is going to be Yoko Yoko, who is sort of farming in that mid lane, just getting whatever he can. Shadow Summon, meanwhile, trying to get a tower down, and Deny going to be coming out from Yoko Yoko there. As well as the Vore's been eaten there by him, so that's a, that's a pretty significant there. Like I was saying, they want to get some gold up, but Void's having none of it. He's going to be able to get the towers down, and that map awareness, that was... Well, you did see then that Yoko Yoko backed out. They thought there must be a ward here, because they said he just ran back. 
He didn't know we were coming. Well, of course, now he does get caught out. <laughs> Dragged into the Shadow Shaman. Can he make it away? He will time walk. Oh, interesting time walk. He goes this way. They're expecting him to go this way. So they sort of, Barrow, you could see, sort of walk back up here. But he did just do the old switch of running down this way. Either way, so like I said, you could see uh, the pin coming out here because he was standing here. And I think he realized that they were pushing on the bottom T1 tower. There was no defense coming out. So that meant that Mithras were probably at the top lane about to gank him. If your allies are pushing a tower and nobody is defending it and you're alone in another lane, uh, assume someone's coming to gank you because they probably are. If they're not going to defend towers, unless they're not intelligent, they are going to be uh, spending their time doing something else. But even that gank there did not succeed. I think Shadow Shaman didn't have enough mana and he, we did see him head back to base now. So 5 to 10 on the board, towers going the way of Titan. Of course, uh, there are occasional trades, but we did see the top one being denied. Middle tower was destroyed there by the Dragonite, so he got the gold from that, and that is going to be the start of his BKB. We can already see the Mithril Hammer being picked up, so the gold Ogre Club being picked up, and the Mithril Hammer should be coming out soon. Lakels, meanwhile, he's gone for an Ogre Club, so it could be a BKB, could be a Sanj and Yasha. Like his, oh sorry, it's just Sanj, Sanj and Yasha, I suppose, probably not though, um, or could be a Heaven's Howl. Uh, like I explained earlier, I'm not for the Heaven's Hell this game just because of Chronosphere removing evasion. But the Heaven's Hell, I suppose, can be useful outside of the Chronosphere, uh, just to sort of stop the Juggernaut or the Void from attacking. But I don't know, I feel like the BKB is going to be the better item choice if he is going to be going for the Ogre Club. I really think a mech or a pipe would have been nice to pick up, though, since he's sort of the mech or the pipe carrier. Anyway, Lakel's not going to get into shade on yet again. Yoko, Yoko coming forward with the Chronosphere. Disruption, this is what I was talking about, and the nice disruption going to be keeping you alive for a moment, but it's not going to be enough. KYT actually blinks in to the Static Storm Ohio coming in with the Omni Slash and the Spin. Get us in KYT all the way back. He's got a haste in there, so he just comes straight back in. More and more, the damage onto him is insane. Looks like maybe he's going to keep going. There's sort of team fights going across the wall. The Kells is just being targeted down by Yoko, Yoko, and Ohio. The two DPS series just taking down the Kells, but meanwhile in the mid lane, it looks like Yamate is going to be able to make it away. The support's really focused firing down Yamate there, but wouldn't find anything from it. So it's going to be two down and make that maybe even three. My pro is in trouble now. Do they have the kinetic field? They do. He's trying to fly away, but he's not going anywhere. Sort of stuck there. Yoko, Yoko coming forward with the time walk just for the slow. And that's going to be three down for the side of Myth. But Barrett has already respawned. He's ready to come in, but he's got no TP for 10 seconds. So he's going to be fire, fire flying, just flying his way up, sorry. Uh, but who can he grab? He's still got his ultimate, but who is worth getting? The wards are up two for the Shadow Shaman, but I think they're going to be better if they just save it for that tier two tower if Titan decides to keep pushing. Titan, of course, might be happy to just to go somewhere like the Roshan pit and try and get the uh, Aegis advantage. No, it looks like this is going to go back and farm. Either way, Mistrust now playing very, very group focused. My pro is going alone, but he pretty much desperately needs to get that BKB up. It's 18 minutes. This is when core items should be coming out, but he's going to be in trouble because the smoke... Actually, they're not even smoke. They're just walking past the ward there. So he should have seen Yamato heading out. The two other heroes, Omni Sash is on cooldown though, so they won't be using that. Uh, My pro though is in trouble. He's going to actually stun onto a higher, but in comes Ned. Says, where you going, buddy? Where you going? I got the send back. Do you want me to use it on you? He, are they gonna, what are they going to do? Are they going to use any spells? They're kind of waiting for him to run away from the creep wave. I think that's what they're waiting for. They're just going to keep hitting him until he leaves the creep wave. But of course, he doesn't want to leave the creep wave. Though he hasn't got enough of the breathe fire. He doesn't just a second. Ned is forced to lay down the static storm. My pro is going to get on with Then Ned makes it away barely on any HP. Meanwhile, well, the other four die. As I was watching, <laughs> as I was watching one, the other four just get, just get killed. That was a chronosphere. Um, an AI ice blast. All of his mana on Yamate. And 5 to 18 on the board. Gold now pretty significantly in favor of Titan, about 10,000. Experience around about 14,000 now. And it looks like now that the Ma Maelstrom is done, as well as the Mask of Madness, they're going to the BKB on this void with the uh, Void Walker. I never have a Void Hammer. And of course, he can now go solo the Roshan. With the Mask of Madness, Roshan can be soloed there by the Void, provided he gets some luck with the Bashes. Now, 
Haley Ward as well going to be dropped down just to help out, and with that, Roshan is going to fall very quickly. Of course, we do see Mithrust smoked up heading in. They did have this ward here, like I said. Gives really nice vision around the Roshan pit. Uh, they will be catching Yamate out. Yamate, though, not going for the grab. Oh, it was on cooldown for six more seconds. He must have mistimed it slightly, but they now know that Roshan is actually being attempted. Void going to time walk himself up to the high ground. He has got no mana, so he's going to be forced to back out. But if he's not careful, Roshan could be just ninja there by myth. Shadow Shaman's wards are on cooldown for 20 more seconds, though. So maybe they're, uh, they're not too worried at this exact moment, but we'll have to see. Either way, Net, Ohio, Extinct, all lurking around the Roshan pit, ready to defend if it does get initiated on. They do still have that Static Storm. Argonim Scepter is done on Extinct, like I said. 15 to 20 minute mark for sure on Extinct, getting that, that Argonim Scepter every time he does it. I don't know how, it's crazy. But Mithras are still ready to come defend if they need to. They can see them going in. They know what's happening, but this is now maybe a better time for them to go since they do actually have up the Flaming Lasso this time. Last time, they didn't, but it looks like they're aware that now uh, Titan are a little bit more prepared. They're ready, so fighting maybe... Are they going to do it? I don't think they can, because Shadow Shaman's not even there. Shadow Shaman's farming the bot lane, so... Free Roshan there for a Titan. Aegis is up onto KYXY, and it looks like he's just chasing after someone. More more just says, get me out of here. If time walks forward, won't be finding anyone, though. No aggressive wards being planted quite yet that he can find anyone with. Though now we do see one being planted down. Shadow Shaman, meanwhile, is trying to rat. These wards annoy me because they face the wrong direction. So face the right direction when they attacked it, really cool. But Yamato now could get the Knight of the Tower. Oh no! Noki's too good for him. But either way, I don't think Shadow Shaman uh, can really stop... <coughs> sorry, stop them from farming his creeps. His summons. Since they do have just enough damage and a lot of survivability, especially from... Uh, Yamato, who's got that max out now on the reactive armor. He started getting it quite early in levels, which has really given him an extra sort of survivability. Do the way Yoko, Yoko BKB is almost done. How about Noki or My Pro? My Pro, still no BKB. He's getting there. He's got the Mythical Armor, but still far away away. And Lakel's actually also going for the BKB, but that's still almost 1,000 away. It's, uh, it's looking really hard. And even the Shadow Shaman. He's gone for the Argonim Scepter. Oh, there's his BKB. Rather than the Blink Dagger, which I find a bit interesting. I would have thought the Blink would be really nice. We could sort of stick back. But this shows now that Noki's aware that he can't go with his team. You go with your team, you're going to lose the team fight. So he's decided it's going to be better if he goes for route items. And essentially he just pushes by himself and tries to get towers alone. Which has been working thus far. Though it is a little bit greedy and harder for his team to sort of play. But I feel like another couple of fights, and unless Myth do something different to turn these fights around, it'll be Titan's game fairly easily soon. Now the tier 2 tower is going to get pressured. It could be a trade. It looks like Mithras is going to be pushing the tier 2 as well. Even dropping the ward. So they're not going to be trying to break the base with this. They are going to be ready to go back. If they wanted to break the base, they would hold their wards. But either way, Lakel's going to get hit there. Ned does have the uh, glimpse. He's going to be using it. Sending back into the tower into the static storm. Lakel's not going to be able to walk out, but Ohio's coming in as well. He has got the Omni Slash as well as the Hag. So if Lakel's gets caught now, yeah, Omni Slash onto his head. Down he goes. Last hit going the way of Yamata there. Meanwhile, Tier 2 Tower is going to take a fall there. Tier 2 Tower is still barely standing. The uh, Shadow Shaman wards aren't even hitting it. So this is going to give it, yep, half HP. So they lose their carry, they lose the Tier 2 Tower. Didn't even need to use the Aegis yet, so it will be reclaimed in three minutes. Whew, so at this point, Titan are probably happy just to keep farming for now. There's nothing really to put the pressure on them. Um, I mean, they've got all the core items they need. Even Ohio, who is offlaning, has got more net worth there than Lakel's. And that is not good. I mean, I feel like Lakel's is such a strong farmer. It's not really a good idea to put him on a semi carry like this Bristleback, since it doesn't really make use of his high farming ability in the late game. But either way, they are going to be now grouping up as 5 onto the top lane. A Titan, ready to maybe try and fight if they can. KYT is just going to be fire flying around. He's got his 4 stuff up, but. I don't know if they have enough damage actually to kill anyone if they do manage to grab them, so we'll 
The next team fight will be very telling, but this T1 tower on the top lane, probably not long for this world. Yamate has got up the Bloodstone now, nine charges on and off that last fight there. And he is looking for blood. Omni Slash is also back up. Very short cooldown of 70 seconds when you have got the Aghanim Scepter. Either way, they're going to get this T2 tower without contest. It uh, looks like the Kels is going to keep on farming the bot lane. He's so close to the BKB, he's saying, guys, just don't fight. Wait the BKB, and then maybe we can take a fight. Though Disruption going to be sent out there onto Momo self. I... I'm not sure where I did that, but either way, Yoko Yoko going in. A ultimate going to be flying through, landing onto two of them. They want to get Mipro down, and with that debuff from the Ancient Cypress, they will be out to this. Three done immediately from Mithras. They're going in now. Omni Slash is up, like I said. Just... Ha 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 ha! Ned saved KYT. They glimpsed him in back. So the Omni Slash was cancelled, but it doesn't matter. There's four dead. Lakelzi isn't even there. He's getting the BKB sent out in the courier, but. Can a BKB save the game? Find out next on Lakelz V5. The Rax has been hit. Shadow Demon is there. In Lakel's go, he's ready to do this, he's ready to fight. Is he going to do it? He is, he's going to get glimpsed back because he can't pull the BKB. He doesn't bother popping the BKB. The Rax has gone down, if he's going to do this, he has to do it about 30 seconds ago. He's going in, he's going to put one, this nasal goo, onto Yoko Yoko. Yoko Yoko time walking out of the way, Lakel's now chasing after all of them. He could pop the Quill Spray for a little bit of extra move speed, it looks like he's not going to. He's just going to go back and farm the Creep Wave. And that was a... Pretty easy rack there for Titan, only a little bit of defense coming out from Mithras. But the Kells just could not manage to find the farm he needed for that BKB in time to get back to join the team fight, so. That's just a Rax. Golden Experience now sitting at 20,000 gold lead for a Titan Experience at 25,000. Mithras from such a hard situation. I mean, Axe is almost done now onto Noki, which will be good. But now we could also be seeing KYT, we're going down, Blink Dagger's up in one second, can he get in range for the Omni Slash? No, the Blink's going to be getting him out of the way, but they can still seem to do that aggressive ward being planned. It looks like KYT will be able to make it out though. But Titan, they could just really push down the mid lane to get this last T2 tower if they wanted to. Looks like they're just going to play it safe possibly. Roshan's not up for another three minutes, so maybe they're going to be waiting for that before they go. They will find an invisibility rune there. Oh, but Batrider is going to be initiating there onto net, net. Is he going to be able to survive this? He's going to send back the Kells, but running through the Firefly, maybe not the best decision. It's going to just be a free kill there, but now Ohio's next, hexed up. Oh no, this could be bad news. Or could it three-man Chronosphere? A ultimate Ice Blast coming through. They do manage to get down too, but there's a triple kill there for Yoko Yoko. KYT is next. The bash on his head. The damage is too much. And even an ultra kill coming out from the Mjolnir. Is he going to be able to get a Rampage? They're trying to get him down. They need the bash. Can they get the bash? Can they get bash? Yes, a Rampage coming out there on to Yoko Yoko. That is KYXY getting that rampage and GT is just going to be called out. <laughs> rampage under KYXY. So Titan are going to be taking this. GG well played to Titan as well as Myth. Thank you of course to MSI for sponsoring this tournament as well as Adata. And thank you everyone for watching. I will see you guys in the next game. Which should be coming up reasonably soon. Anyway, see you soon.